Well, mm, it is, <laughs> is a Hilbert space also a Banach space? Right. And so, if, if you have a normal linear space and then you add and you add a Cauchy, and you add the Cauchy uh, sequences converge, mm -hmm. it has to be in Banach. Right. Yeah. I, I think the key is what you're just talking about. The if it's an inner product, we can induce a norm. And so, when we say complete inner product space, we're saying complete with respect to the induced norm. So yes, Hilbert implies Banach. Like a Hilbert space is a Banach space, um, but a Hilbert space is a special kind of Banach space because not every Banach space is a Hilbert space. Because of my claim here, which, <laughs> so, yeah. So what are examples of Hilbert spaces? Right, like, yeah, so pretty much most of our examples are Hilbert spaces, right? Like the complex numbers, the complex n vectors, um, the um, LeBay integrable functions, complex values, Le complex valued LeBay integrable functions. I think we called it L2. Wait a minute, what did we call that? Well, yes, definitely the uh, L2, little L2, the s square summable sequences, um, is a is a is a Hilbert space because we proved before that that was complete with respect to that that notion of norm. Um, <clears throat> and um, on the other hand, if we look at like here's some example. So yeah, L2R and L2AB are Hilbert spaces. Um, so, examples. Um, so, C, Cn, all of L2, um, <clears throat> uh, L2, R, and um, let's see here, what was the other one? L2AB, L2AB, so square, square summable, like LeBay, squ square summable in the LeBay sense, uh, L2AB, so locally integrable. Does it have to be bounded? Our R is not bounded. Mm -hmm. R is not bounded. I suppose, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a little I'm not sure about that, Audric. Um, th these, we have proved um, completeness for these before. Yeah. So, so if you think of, well, capital O2 is an equivalence class, right? Uh, yes, so if yeah. Think, if you take an integral function from that equivalence class, then it, technically, I guess, you're just starting off two points. Right. You think about the, the close brackets, so I guess the, it wouldn't work for a little bit. Yeah. I, oh, you think, yeah, he, he, uh, he, so you, you can, that sounds like a homework problem. Oh. No? I, I no. You're, you're, I, I you, so you think you can play games, if you, if you change just the open interval, you, you, get, you think you can cause problems? Well, I thought there was a, There's a problem about that? I don't remember it ever been, being written that it doesn't matter, so that, that gives me pause. So, um, because I feel like that would have been emphasized, you know? Now, it, it has been emphasized that you can like trade out, you can, tr you can trade step functions over a closed interval for like step functions over like a, a clopen or an opposed integral. But I think that's like a separate issue than the totality of the domains of the functions you're looking at. I, I don't know. But, that would be that would be a good thing for us to do is to give an example why we don't want to look at 
this? Why is this problematic? Is this problematic? Like, is this problematic or is it just, why is that problematic, you know? Does, I mean, I don't think that's been defined. So how would you define it and does it not work? So, okay, anyway, more, more interestingly here. This one, check this one. So xn, this sequence. Uh, so the sequence is one, a half, a third. All right. Da, 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 1 over n. And then zeros past that, okay? So this is um, a polynomial. And I'm putting that in quotes because, you know, polynomial in L2, right? Because we have finitely many non zero things, right? And in fact, indeed, you know, this is, a this is a sequence in those polynomials, right? Sequence of, it's a sequence of polynomial in L2 terms, right? Agree? However, and uh, he says, okay, so that, that's, and um, he says that this is a Cauchy sequence. He says this is, in fact, this is a Cauchy sequence. Can you guys see that? Why is this a Cauchy sequence in L2? That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think kind of. I mean, let's see, xn minus xm, right, is going to be what the sum. Let's say you know. K equals one to. Golly, let me let me let me assume that n is greater than m for the sake of discussion. So k equals one to n will do it. That's the last non-zero thing. And you're looking at, you know, <clears throat> the absolute value of like, you know, good grief. Um, well, you can see how it, you can see how it goes, right? I mean, everything's zero here, right up until it's not. So like they're canceling. So you're adding up the differences between the sequences. That's how this works, right? The, I mean, the definition of, I mean, I should put parentheses in here to make it more palatable. Um, so it's like one minus one plus, you know, one half minus one half plus da, 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 right? Until finally you get to what? Like, Yeah, one over m m plus one. Yeah. Right, right. So you, 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 you get. Oh, it is right. Sorry, David. I was thinking. So you, you just get. Yeah. Um. You get these terms, right? And um, he, he's slicker than all this. He gives a more convincing argument in the book that this, in fact, limits to zero as m and n go to infinity. You know, I mean, he he he, he gives explicit calculation there to, to to prove that this is a Cauchy sequence, right? It's a wonderful. It's a Cauchy sequence, and it's a Cauchy sequence inside the polynomials of L two. What's its limit sequence? That you can kind of see without such sophistication. The limit sequence is what? Well, it's, it's got one at the start, right? So I think the limiting sequence would be one, a half. Well, yeah, what is the limiting sequence? 
Golly. Like for a particular n or to infinity? Oh, it's, its limit is one, one half, one third, and so forth. That is the limiting sequence, my bad. So Yeah, I mean, I think that's, yeah I, yeah, I think that is not an element of, is that even an element of L2? Yeah, it, it, Oh, it is, it, it is, because I've forgotten. This is an element, this is an element of L2, right? Why? Because it's not the sum of 1 over n. L2 does says what? You take the square root of the squares. So, I mean, that's, that's, oh. that's what's going on here. So this is the, the norm of this guy. Let me call this thing Pac-Man. So like the norm of Pac-Man, the L2 norm, right, is this. So, you know, it's this square root of pi squared over six, right, you know? So it's pi over root six, hooray. But, so that, that is in fact, so the limit of the sequence is in L2, right? Yeah. This, indeed, the sequence is not in L1 because of the harmonic series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. But the thing is, the limit has infinitely many non-zero terms, therefore it's not polynomial. So that proves that the polynomials in L2 are not a Hilbert space. They're an inner product space, but they're not a Hilbert space because they're not complete. So that's a, that's a, I think that was a kind of nice example, I thought. Um, the polynomials and the, the space of polynomials of L2. Yeah. yeah. Let's see here. Oh, I better stop here for today. Um, this is a pretty good place to stop. The, the, um, the next example I'd probably just let you guys read. Um, he does something with the, um, let me just read through that example. I'm not writing it out anyway. So he says the space discussed in example 3.26. Which one was that? Actually, we, heard, I think we already talked about that. That was the, um, let me write out some things about this. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, but. So 3.26 was the continuous functions from the closed interval A to B. And I don't think I, um, okay, so yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's an inner product space, but he points out that, um, I need to write this on the board so I can make the discussion. Let me hang this discussion on some writing. So this example. not Hilbert space. So the example he's looking at is like the continuous functions on A to B. Um, they are <clears throat> with, remember we said inner product of F and G, integral A to B, F of X, G of X conjugate DX, right? Okay, so his, his uh, evidence against that being a Hilbert space is given on page, um, you know, 99 to 100, where he gives us a sequence of functions, I believe, I believe, oh, see figure 3.1. There's figure 3.1. So it, it's like, they're kind of like, they're step functions, basically. They start out one and then they drop to zero at one half. And then, so I think he's, so I guess they trip, they typically drop it. Okay, so they drop to zero close to one half, um, but they do it closer and closer and closer and closer the further you get out, right? So it gets more and basically this is a sequence which becomes the step function at a half in the limit, you know? And, um, he says, okay, so the sequence is continuous, and um, he proves it's Cauchy, and, um, and he says it pointwise converges to the, well, what I just said, the step function from zero to one half. It's one from zero to a half, and then it's zero from one half to one. So it, it does, and that's a, um, 
and that, that is what it converges to, but that's not continuous, right? So basically, I can draw a picture. His, his sequence basically looks something like this. He, he goes here, um, and so it's like something like that. This is a typical Fn. And so as, as n goes to infinity, your limit function that you want is this. All right, so it's just the, here's a half. So eventually that shrinks and you, in the limit, Fn goes to F, which is not an element of C. Um, so he, he focuses on zero, one, but of course you can, um, you can easily adapt this example for AB, right? It's, I mean, you can build this sequence of limit, limiting to a step function for, for the continuous functions from A to B just the same. And then, and then again, and you can kind of see why the difference in this would be Cauchy. I mean, you can see why the difference in this would give you something that you can, that, that has a finite norm. Because when you calculate the subtract, basically you're just getting this spike here. Right, and if you if you square this, basically you're going to end up squaring the spike in the integral. It's more or less just the integral of like a parabola that has at most height one. You know, and it's got a vanishing width, so of course that's going to go to zero. You can you can start to understand if you just start thinking about what that integral means for the. Anyway, it's not, it's not hard to see that this is a Cauchy sequence. He has the calculation there more explicit than I'm doing. So you have a Cauchy sequence, which is in the space continuous functions from 0 to 1, yet its limit function is not continuous. Therefore, this is not a Hilbert space because it's not complete. So that was his example, um, you know, 3.35. It's example 3.36 is that L2R and L2AB are Hilbert spaces. So L2 is not continuous. It's the Lebesgue integrable functions on the Lebesgue integrable functions on AB is bigger. Like the step function would be in the Lebesgue integrable functions. So this example wouldn't pose a problem for L2. See L2, L2 AB is, is a different animal. This is not continuous functions on AB. This is Lebesgue integrable functions on AB. So this, this one is a Hilbert space because, and it doesn't have, this, this example is not a problem for that one. And, and of course, in chapter two, we've proved that that's a complete space with respect to the inner product, um, with respect to the norm, but that norm is the same norm. The norm which is induced from the inner product stated in this section is the same as the norm that we looked at in the previous chapter. So it's like that work still applies. Um, but anyway, that's, that's pretty much where I want to stop. So the next example, the next two examples are very interesting and they're important to applications, especially differential equations. And like the rest of section 3.3, um, you know, we don't want to rush through. And then so we'll, we'll finish talking about convergence and, and um, can, you know, there's like a couple, there's a strong convergence, there's a weak convergence. We'll look at what's called a sublift space. Um, and then section 3.4 is on orthogonal and orthonormal systems, but we are quickly approaching things which have um, really interesting applications in differential equations and so forth. So um, I'm excited about where we're going. And anyway, I'm, I don't know, you, you guys know me. I'm not really, integration's not in my blood. <laughs> I'm, we're, we're back to the linear algebra again. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> so anyway. I'm going to shut the camera off here. <laughs>